good morning all i welcome you to the morning session of uh, today and today we have the pleasure of having dr n ramachandran with us sir is senior scientist icr national institute of animal nutrition and physiology adugodi uh, bangalore and the topic uh, for, chosen for deliberation is modern practices uh, of feeding and management of goats for commercial production sir you are audible as well as visible and your presentation is also visible please start sir okay thank you sir uh, good morning to all first of all i thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to present my views and on different aspects of goat production um uh, first of all briefly i want to introduce myself i am dr ramachandran completed my bbsc from namakkal veterinary college namakkal from 91 to 97 and thereafter uh, master degree from ndra karnal from 98 to 2000 then two thing and i was continuing phd but after jo for joining agricultural research service i discontinued and joined at icr central institute for research on goats from uh, 16th april 2003 and continued till 30th august 2020 and uh, i joined the present institute that is national institute of animal nutrition and physiology 5 months back so with this 18 years of experience on goat production and management my basic discipline is livestock production and management so with this brief background and my uh, gained practical experience i wish to share and discuss few practical tips for uh, uh, establishing a commercial goat farm for business purposes this is what the title we have finalized with the organizer uh, the topics which i will be covering is introduction about goat husbandry in all in and its present status then four pillars of management like breeding feeding housing and healthcare management and concluding remarks so with this uh, goat production is no more as a poor man's cow and uh, only for not only for uh, what to say it is only for livelihood purposes now this system is shifting from extensive system to semi intensive and intensive rearing system as a preferred livestock species and the government of india already uh, prognosed and forecasted goat is going to be a future animal considering the production system and the recent development in the livestock sectors coming in so um, as a commercial goat production then there are many issues the most important thing is we should follow the scientific tips or scientific methods of goat rearing so that we can uh, have more output from the goat rearing as a business view nowadays the goat rearing is coming up as a business uh, rearing like specialized goat rearing for breeding purposes like breeding farm then broiler farm like uh, purchasing the 3 to 4 months old male kids and this castrating it and selling it as a premium price for festival seasons like eid then the commercialization in goat farming now the presently the goat rearing is still as a farming and is in primitive stage to reach the goat industry with the uh, uh, people like us technical experts and for private in, uh, in participation of the private players we will be in near future we will be reaching to the shape of goat industry following the path of poultry industry at present we have 140 approximately 149 millions of goats and this showing the trend that total uh, percentage around 10% population is increased as compared to other livestock species and since it is the leaner meat or it is a most live preferred livestock species and most preferred livestock meat the future is in our hand and as a technical person we should help in developing this farming business to an industry business so the present status as we all know it is simply since ancestry it is uh, for livelihood purposes rearing 2 to 10 animals or 20 animals by the poor socially economic weak uh, farming community 
and and recently educated and unemployed youth are taking up the goat husbandry as a high tech goat farming business following scientific goat rearing practices so if we come to the breeding management in all we have 34 goat breeds in our country recognized goat breeds only 20 percent of the life goat germ plasm is recognized by the nodal agency that is icr nbhr karnal and uh, recent and this process will be going on and uh, we have to realize particularly the commercial farmer or the startup entrepreneurs should realize that goat breeds having potential but at the starting stage we should not go behind the goat breeds rather we should select the existing breeds in the local area and we should go on these are the some of the goat breeds promising goat breeds in our country like jamnapari barbari sirohi beetle marwadi katchi jakrana then osmanabadi then konkan kanyal then salam black then uh, what to say telicheri like promising breeds we have no need to go to import the germ plasm initially and the government of india's primary concern is to conserve our good germ blossoms for developing the farming community so in terms of breeding management in general goats having 10 to 12 years lifespan and uh, it reaches the puberty at the age of six to nine months varying from smaller breeds to larger breeds similarly age of sexual maturity uh, for smaller breeds it is around one year like barbary and black bengal and for larger breeds like jamnapari and jakrana it is uh, you can add six months more that is 18 months so uh, the first mating or first uh, mating should be done to maintain the flock productivity and body condition of the animal should be after sexual maturity that is approximately one year for smaller breeds and one and half year for larger breeds even animal will come into heat before that and we should avoid uh, crossing the animal otherwise animals body may not be developed body score and uh, animal may not be able to persistently yield its full production potential till its production life that is up to seven years age so the heat detection and service we have to do timely in organized floor where large number of animals are there after three months male kids and female kids are separated lifelong till its life so male flock will be separate and female flock will be separate so every uh, what to say every day morning and evening at least 10 to 20 minutes the male goats that is bucks to be aproned or covered its uh, external genitalia and it should be allowed to roam around in the paddock and whatever animal is in coming into the heat that is to be separated so that bucks will be concentrating on other doors and we can uh, follow the mating plan or insemination the bucks the most important constraint in goat production or commercialization of goat production is non-availability of superior allied germ plasm that is non-availability of breeding bucks reason being the well-grown animal kids at the age of three to four months are slaughtered in particularly goats so we don't have sufficient number of breeding adult breeding bucks for breeding purposes for improving the goat production so we should ensure that as a technical export am i audible sir am i audible yes sir yes sir you are audible okay i'm going ahead so we should ensure that for mating purposes or breeding purposes we should have quality breeding bucks that is allied proven bucks so that we can have more profit in the flock that if we discuss it is in general if you see the farmer's flock for maybe 100 animals also they have only one buck that is not recommended so the recommended male female ratio is for stall feeding system is 1 is to 10 and for extensive rearing system it is 1 is to 20. We suppose 100 females if we have breedable females we should have at least five to six male bucks for normal coverage of the breedable female population in a particular breeding season the breeding policy, yes, I have button, sir. 
the breeding you are audible sir you are audible okay the breeding policy we should follow as i already mentioned the during start up farmer should not go behind the breeds because after having the training and the initial knowledge on goat rearing people are fancy of purchasing breeds transporting long distance and ending up in failure so sincere advice is locally adapted breeds we should locate upon we should have a consultation with the local experts like kvk experts or university people and we should select the most important again the input will be even though after training people may be having information and knowledge but for breeding purposes as a foundation stock it is very difficult to uh, collect the animal and uh, rear it so it will take 2 to 3 years at least to collect the foundation stock quality animals for rearing purposes in the flock so we should not supposed to confuse with the breeds and all so we should go for selective breeding like uh, best performing animal or continuously few females may be giving three kids four kids like that so like from those animals the male and females could be kids must be reserved for breeding purposes and rearing purposes for establishing the best performing flock the cross breeding may be after initial 10 years or 20 years of having all the facilities in the flock they may go for uh, having the higher target of the body weight gain or milk yield and they can go for cross breeding or upgrade but not at the initial stage to breeding season and mating season tropical goat breeds like our indian breeds we don't have any specific mating season or breeding season Uh, and all our tropical goats are around the year breeder but for commercial business purposes we cannot have uh, 12 months mating and we cannot have 12 months feeding and on all other things which will create problem in the farm and we may not be in a position to concentrate on particular activity more accurately and that may cause production loss in the farm so we can take up with the natural synchronization synchronization part that is breeding buck effect suppose in larger bovines like cattle and buffalo we can take up uh, hormonal injection and synchronized synchronization it's synchronization but for smaller ruminants and all no need to go for hormonal synchronization for that we can use the concept of buck effect that is male and females are maintained separately if you not allowing the male in the female flock for two estrus cycle maybe 40 to 50 days then suddenly if we expose the male buck in the female flock all females will come into heat in a particular single time within 72 hours of exposure so in that way we can take up the mating in one particular place and after 5 months we can have kidding in following this natural synchronization method without money involvement we can synchronize the flock so that we can have uniform management practices and even we can pre plan accordingly for targeting the festive season for getting premium price of our goats then after continuing the quality bucks in the flock it must we must the entrepreneur must exchange the bucks or replace the bucks farmers what they can do is they can exchange the quality bucks between the farms and if uh, larger farms they can sell it to the farmers for breeding purposes and they can have their young stock for the breeding then mating if we have normal feeding and all uh, general recommendation is two to three uh, semen collection or mating in a week but during mating season in larger flock maybe 50 and 60 females will be coming in pair heat so at maximum by giving 20 to 30 minutes rest these bucks can be used but not more than 10 to 12 bucks uh, 12 females for a single male and number of mating the duration of estrus in goats for smaller breed is 24 hours and the larger breeds like jamnapuri and jatrana it extends up to 36 hours so accordingly we can plan it Uh, the covering mating practice may be immediately at the time of heat detection in the morning and evening or morning evening and next day morning so that we can ensure 95 more than 95% of the animals are covered and successfully conceived because in goats there is no issue of repeat breeding and all only 5% that may be anatomical or anatomical or hereditary issues but not as a management issue 
then breeding wise so if you are not if you are feeding the animals at optimum level or higher protein level and not using for mating purposes or breeding purposes animals like male may develop will develop uh, homosexual behavior then masturbation then in females self sucking behavior particularly first parity of kidders will develop self sucking behavior so we should in the organized form as far as possibility is not fixed like industry or factory but for for organized flock we should follow the farming operation timings as far as possible like if we follow suckling time at 6 am it should be around 5:32 within 5:32 6:30 or so but not one day 5:30 or 6 and another day at 8 am this type of uh, irregular farm operations will create devices uh, develop uh, biases or abnormal behavior in the flock that will cause heavy production loss in the flock so if we come to the second part feeding management it is as usual for all other livestock farming two third of the cost of production is on feeds so it should be our arrangements that we waste uh, we minimize the waste as low as possible with arranging the locally available resources feeds and fodders cost effectively prepare call uh, list frustration so that we can have more profit and we can achieve two things there are the irrespective of the management system two things are there one is target age and another is target weight so depending upon the management and feeding level we follow we should it is not that up to 12 months we should rear and sell it that we may not be getting the fcr feed conser uh, feed conversion ratio in goat farming is around 1 is to 6 to 8 if we if we are in a position to restrict to 7 or 6 it is most it will be most economical and again if suppose uh, we target uh, people's demand in a particular area is 20 kg or 15 kg or 12 kg accordingly we can increase the feeding level or intensify the feeding level and reduce the age at slaughter in particularly in southern part of the country we we may not be having uh, already we have the shortage of quality quality young animals for uh, meat, meat purposes so uh, as per the demand it is going even 3 months 3 and 1/2 months so accordingly the farm entrepreneurs should decide what is our target weight and what is the demand so accordingly we can plan the feeding system suppose in general based on the people's experience and feedback for us actually as a cirg uh, we have already reached the 89th commercial goat farm training and from the feedback from the farmers or entrepreneurs what we suggest is goat is highly successful under semi maintenance system and sheep is highly successful under stall feeding system so if you want to take the business we we should have some grazing area also if possible then the animals the feed cost will be less and the animals will be more healthy in general uh, we allow uh, young animals for 2 to 3 hours initially after weaning and uh, there after adult animals 5 to 6 hours minimum at least in take in practically uh, it is estimated the scientific community estimated and recommended in irrespective of the season if you are and goats animals went for grazing it can consume 100 gram dry matter per hour so accordingly we can calculate the dry matter requirement in the consumed in grazing and remaining portion we can give it in the farm and feeding for young kids after suckling we should not allow uh, uh, concentrated feeding for one hour the young kids should be allowed for playful activity and after one hour we should feed then uh, concentrated feed we should offer for the kids uh, then uh, dry fodder then green fodder in that way if we go take it up the feed cost will be minimum and by using proper feeding utensils we can reduce the feed cost uh, feed wastage to the tune of nil to 5% otherwise normally under stall feeding conditions goats naturally uh, they are browsers and uh, if we maintain under stall feeding condition it can waste the feed up to the tune of 40% so we can imagine if 40% feed is wasted then how much extra feed we have to feed it and we may not be a successful entrepreneur from good husbandry 
and uh, as a feeding behavior of the goats they are generally browsers and they like tree fodder most so that is the general opinion if animals are going for grazing and the tree fodders are available for the goats they may not be having uh, mic micronutrient deficiency like cattle and buffalo because trees are deep rooted and the tree leaves are having high rich in mineral and other micronutrients so goats may not be having uh, micronutrient deficiency as compared to sheep or cattle and buffaloes if you see the nutrient requirement 3 to 5% in general suppose uh, the average body weight is for an adult goat is uh, ranging in around 25 to 35 kg or say 30 kg then 3% means 900 grams 5% means 1500 grams so um, in a day uh, we should ensure that at least 900 to uh, maybe 700 to 1500 grams per day dry matter should be consumed that energy and protein also for younger animals for production of animals under stress they we should give more energy and more protein and one practical thing is that we should ensure full stomach suppose animal is going for grazing or and even stall feeding whatever we feed maybe badam maybe pista or maybe uh, only dry fodder we should ensure our feeding practices should ensure that animal stomach is filled since goats are ruminant animals if their stomach is filled in any way their satiety center will work normally microbial system ecosystem will be working normally then fcr will be normal then feeding time and feeding frequency in general people may think that goats are susceptible to heat stress and all but based on our practical experience and in reality summer season is the most flourishing season for goats unlike cattle and buffaloes in during summer season the milk yield increases then animal coming into e heat mostly 60% of the animals coming in the flock to the heat in april may which is having uh, experiencing even 40 45 in northern belt it reaches even 48 50 so um, summer season is not an issue in goat but for elite animal and high producing animal we should give uh, try to give more comfortable microclimate for the goats in general if anybody asks or in a form how much fodder i should procure or how much fodder i should make it available either green fodder or dry fodder and concentrate for calculation purposes for your project one should consider that for each adult animal 200 g concentrate 750 g to 1500 g dry fodder 2 to 3 kg green fodder to achieve the dry matter content of 750 to 1500 g dry matter irrespective of the physiological stage then production level etc if we concentrate and arrange this um, feed material in the form with varieties then we may reduce the feed cost and increase the profit in the farm suppose high producing animal if it is in milk we should go 400 for 400 g for each uh, liter of milk so it is not possible animal wise feeding for milk production because suppose we have lactating animal group having 40 animals 400 g means 16 kg in that particular paddock group we should feed it like that 45 days of pregnancy last 45 days of pregnancy additional allowance of 300 g suppose pregnant animal means 300 g concentrate for last 45 days and 200 g as a maintenance ration so 300 g we should give for last uh, 45 days of pregnancy that is called as steaming up ration or uh, that for breeding animals both male and female at least one breeding cycle 21 days to 42 days before big breeding season in the flock we should give additional concentrate supplementation to increase the ovum release that is flushing what we call it as or uh, increase the kids birth or uh, kids uh, litter weight then if we uh, see the management practices uh, physiological stage wise immediately after birth in larger flock because former flock they maintain all the male female young ones in one single uh, group 
but for your organized flock for scientific goat rearing the group dynamics or recommended group strength flock strength in each group should not exceed 40 to 50 animals maybe young kids maybe adult kids so from lactating animal growth animal showing symptom of kidding because we may have we have the farmer the entrepreneur will be having records in the form what is the date of kidding and tentatively we can plan it this month this week the kidding practices will be there accordingly that uh, we can observe the signs for kidding and we can separate the pregnant animals and we should keep it in individual cages. If larger breeds may be 1.5 to 1.5 meter, smaller breeds it is 1 to 1 by 1 meter cage so that individual care can be given and there may not be any other aggressive behavior among animal than butting, then mortality of uh, young ones. So we should care individually these uh, very um, kidding animal uh, dose and we should give special care and two important farm operations we should take it one is um, colostrum feeding that is first milk after kidding uh, people think that after uh, completion of two kids or three kids then they may take two hours one and a half hours three hours like that or after expression of placenta people having the false belief or faith so it is not that the recommendation is that we should feed the colostrum as early as possible after washing the teeth with uh, diluted cabinophore solution and we can start feeding uh, colostrum. In normal case, majority of the case, kids will stand up automatically maybe within 10 minutes to 20 minutes and it will start the natural suckling and you should not uh, consume more uh, colostrum and till five days or one week, young ones and kids will be with the dam in the organized flock. And thereafter, kids are separated permanently till weaning, that is three months age. And kids are brought to the female, uh, that sorry, that female dose, female dam animals, mothers are brought to kids enclosure and allowed to suckle the morning and the evening twice, till three months of age. After that, milks are stopped completely. And the navel pot treatment, again, normally in majority of the cases, immediately after kidding, animal uh, get up and naturally that umbilical cord got incised. Otherwise, we should cut it at leaving one inch after having the knot and we should dip it in the tincture iodine. Practical experiences is that wherever the kidding operations are taking place, that is to be covered well from predation of crow and other predators or we can cover the navel cord with the cloth, temporary cloth and main important criteria here where feeding operations taking place, floor management that is using bedding material and we should protect them from extreme cold in case of northern part or we should avoid soil licking, self-sucking etc. from the kids without bedding. If bedding is used, especially in winter, it should be removed in the morning after 8 o'clock and we should be dried in the open sunlight till evening and if it is foul metal is gone and bedding metal is dried, again it should be spread. Like that way, without foul, foul smell, we can use it for 3 to 4 days and after that we have to replace with the new bedding material. Then again lime dusting, then sunlight exposure, yes, then again in case of like poultry, suppose if we have 50 kids, 100 kids, continuously for 3 months we should not keep them in one place. We should change, suppose if we have 100 feet set, one side of the wall we can uh, house them for one month and another uh, side of the wall we can keep it in another side for one month. In that way, we can have the down, down time of one month and we can break the life cycle of the uh, bones. Then twice a day, I think I have told, if animals are uh, good yielder, sufficient milk will be there, maybe twins or triplets, or if it is not there, then we should go for faster suckling from other animals. If farm having uh, smaller breeds like Burberry or low milk yielding animals from local uh, animals, then we can have one or two uh, good yielding goats or even cow milk can be supplemented to the uh, extra surplus kids. If high yielders are there, then we should use other bags. So we should ensure the excess milk feeding also not there. If excess milk feeding, animal come, uh, kids may be having uh, nutritional diarrhea and we may be ended up 
with uh, loss of appetite then treatment cost and so on and that animal after if not responded for 2 to 3 days beyond 3 days these kids may not be able to regain their original growth status yeah they are uh, similar to their contemporaries then underfeeding also we should avoid it then it will cause abnormal wases like intersucking soil sucking then less growth in general we uh, divide the growth phase of the goats in four phases that is 0 to 3 months 3 to 6 months 6 to 9 months and 9 to 12 months this 3 to 0 to 3 months uh, the growth rate for an organized flock average on an average for optimum feeding and optimum feeding management it should be around 80 to 100 g and 3 to 6 months maybe 70 to 80 g but this 3 to 6 months is the most stressful period transition period because we introduce vaccination stress we introduce vaccine, uh, this what to say um, new feeding feed material stress then we uh, give a stoppage of milk and so on so this transition period we will be having less growth as compared to 6 to 9 months or 9 to 12 months on an average if we want to assess the farms um, management level whether it is optimum or suboptimum or uh, elite feeding level in the farm but, but on an average it should not go below 60 grams per day adg average daily guide if it is going below 60 gram then the farm enterprise will not be a profitable one this is the feeding schedule for up to 9 months old up to 15 days only uh, what to say up to 3 to 5 days i told only first milk we have to give and up to 15 days and kids may not be having any uh, nibble any uh, green fodder or dry fodder but it will start after second week it will start nibbling uh, green fodder so for goats particularly kids tree fodder leaves like bear or any palatable tree fodder leaves we can offer to the kids so that it will start nibbling or learn to eat green fodders then from first month we can give concentrate little from initial month then after that we can go on increasing uh, the concentrate mixer in the feeder in feeding utensils we should observe suppose for 50 kg if we put 5 kg then if it is not remaining on the next day or next week then we should continue the same feeding level if it is uh, leftover is not there for the next day then we should increase to 120 then 130 like that practical experience we should increase accordingly but we should avoid the base stage then we should over avoid over feeding also then two types of treat mixture that up to 3 months we feed the concentrate in the in organized flock in powder form so in that case if leguminous fodder trees or fodder green fodder are available then we can restrict to the uh, dcp to 12% if not only grasses and cereal fodder are available then we should increase the uh, protein level to the level of 18% and energy level simultaneously more energy level as compared to the so that if egg leguminous fodder is there then there is no need to provide too much of concentrate also for practical purposes during transition period or at the time of selling what farmers they practice normally at the time of selling maybe 15 days or 21 days before selling uh, they supplement 1% or 2% of the body weight they supplement concentrate feed. otherwise daily basis if we concentrate increase the concentrate level we may not be having profit so the concentrate basically may be young animal may be adult animal having may be majority having energy component then protein component energy for energy mainly grains and uh, for uh, oil this uh, uh, and fat level for fat ground cake we can use it then bran then mineral mixture then salt in that case whatever locally available during harvesting season we should uh, maybe their own crop residues or grains available with them or in the nearby area during harvesting season they should procure in larger form they should procure and prepare their own feed for have realizing higher profit so for 3 to 12 months kids this is the feeding schedule simply but based on uh, practical experience in the entrepreneur form level the farmers or entrepreneurs they can fine tune their level this is the general recommendation and what is there to based on their target we should increase or decrease 
this feeding level for adult goats in general the recommendation is 5 to 6 hours grazing and with dry fodder supplementation and green fodder supplementation the concentrate then strategically we should feed not based on our feed cost then our demand etc etc but during uh, production stress period like transition phase during mating season then high milk yielding season during pregnancy period as i already told additional supplementation to be given then form of the feed whether we give a dry fodder green fodder concentrate separately or as a total mixed ration it is all up to us and larger scale on long run the forms are running then they can have tmr total mixed ration complete feed and all to reduce the manpower yes manpower shortage is the critical uh, input for livestock and other all other agricultural farm operations so if animals are, are goats are raised under stall feeding condition we should develop uh, what to say fodder cycle annual fodder cycle and we should grow uh, perennial uh, multi cut uh, grass fodders like o1 super napier red napier for energy sources sorghum uh, bajra like area wise and they can have single crop multi uh, inter crop like that and leguminous fodders like uh, subabul uh, sesbania then agastai uh, like that they can have balanced green fodder requirement what i told you how per day how much we should need accordingly uh, for each fodder variety what is the per hectare yield and what is the interval between the multi cut we should decide and we should develop area under fodder cultivation in the organized flock for ensuring round the year green fodder supply even trials are undergoing even without green fodder supply people are raising broiler kid rearing uh, only using concentrate and uh, what to say a uh, dry fodder that all we have to fine tune and development since private players are coming up and the commercial farming uh, is in, in primitive stage it will take maybe half to one decade to come up with full farming practices for a stall feeding yes i have already told we should use whatever it may be locally available cost effective economic feeding devices to reduce the feed wastage to bare minimum similarly water for on an average 2 to 5 liters of water is required for each adult goat accordingly and one more question we should not confuse that water should be available in the form round the clock in the goat form it is not necessary so particularly only for young kids and lactating animals we should ensure 24 hours water availability in the form remaining growing animals and other uh, physiological stage we should allow only two to three times two times normally three times during summer season if we round the year if we uh, round the clock if we give this feed retention in the intestine and uh, rumen will be less and accordingly uh, that fcr will be reduced based on automation for larger form smaller form we can ensure what type of feeding and watering devices we should follow but one scientific principle we should follow it that the height of the feeding device or watering device should be at the shoulder point height that is uh, under the neck not below not above if you see most of the form if you go for survey it will be on the ground or it is uh, above far away from the uh, floor so we should ensure that the feeding trough height the feeding trough height should be the shoulder point height of the average shoulder point height of the animal in the flock maybe kids maybe smaller breed maybe larger breed accordingly the height at uh, feeding trough will be varying the second important third important part is housing management on an average 1 to 1.5 square meter per goat is need to be taken into account for calculating uh, how much floor space is required or i want to start a farm what should be the size dimension of the farm so in general as usual in case of other livestock farm east west orientation that is long axis of the side should be on the east west orientation for tropical environment and open paddock for more advantage and sunlight exposure the open paddock should be on southern side but if uh, space permits we can have on both the side open paddock that will save the manpower 
by saving the man uh, manpower in daily cleaning in the open paddock and so on in the area where the east west orientation is not possible they can have better alternate one that is south west orientation the general floor space requirement is recommended by CARG after many trials, but for memory purposes, up to three months, it should be one fourth of the square meter, that is 0.25 square meter, and three to six months, half square meter, six to nine months, 0.75 square meter, and uh, around one year age goats, it is one square meter, and adult, if we say it is adult, it is more more than one year goat is called as adult goat. It it should be one to one point five. Uh, it is lactating animal and breeding bucks, it should be 1.5 to 2. This range, why it is recommended? Smaller, this uh, smaller for smaller breeds and larger breeds, like then the agroclimatic region wise. This uh, floor space is essentially need to be maintained irrespective of the housing conditions. This is the most important part in the housing aspect of the goat for maintaining hygienically following the animal welfare. And 5 to 10 percent, we can accommodate more during for short period, but not more than that. If we increase more stocking density, then we cannot maintain the thumb rule of the housing that is maintaining the floor dry and clean. That can is not possible practically. So, open paddock for free roaming, this is just double of the covered area for all physiological stage. Another space requirement is ventilation space. This is called how much area we are keeping open on the long side of the set that is called ventilation area during uh, winter or uh, cold season it should be only two to ten percent or two to five percent how that is five percent of the floor area how we can keep it by covering with gunny bags thatch panels etc remaining during uh, uh, hot season we should have 70 percent open and during rainy season or humid season high humid season we should keep 100% open so that air movement will be proper and animal will be having proper. Then what is the dimension? Dimension, there is no fit dimension for length. Whatever the size of the flag, we should go and we should take it up. But normally length is restricted to 60 or 100 for having better strength of the building but width it should not be more than 20 feet or 25 feet why considering the normal average wind speed of our india or tropical countries like that is five to eight kilometers per hour if we maintain construct the set within 20 feet we don't need any additional electrical power to remove the exhaled air and hold small in the form and the, with the normal speed of natural wind speed, the fresh air will enter from one side and take the foul air to the other side. If we increase the width, then we may have to incur extra cost on electrical consumption. So walls, it should be up to roof on the uh, width side and long side, it should be only 1 to 1.2 meter. This is also not required practically, but for commercial farm, we need it because uh, if we say uh, we need to fix uh, the wire mesh jolly and preventing the rainwater and what to say, then predators entering from outside to inside the farm. Otherwise, because this is the minimum housing requirements. Otherwise, if somebody says, I want to take a high-tech goat farm, no restriction. Money, if money, budget is the, not the restriction, but our sincere advice is up to two, three years, don't go for constructing um, high-tech goat shelter and save this money for purchasing the foundation stock, developing the quality fodder bank in the goat farm and procuring vaccines and timely health cover for the goats with minimum number of animals that is 50 to 60 animals that, that one manpower can handle whole farm operation and learn this two to three years period is the learning during that period we should not supposed to go but the commercial people and the farmers or entrepreneurs who wants to make the i am telling very frankly black money to white money they want loan they want first 
shelter structures but our sincere advice if you want a uh, long run player in the match good husbandry match or good entrepreneur and good industry match kindly 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 follow minimum housing requirements and provide all welfare to your goats procure good quality animals learn and gain confidence and increase your flock strength so that we will be very happy after seeing your uh, existence sustenance in the goat husbandry as a goat expert similarly between two shed it should not be more than 20 feet to maintain uh, disease containment measures in the larger flock then surrounding should be we should keep it as green cover to reduce heat load and all that i have already told the open area should be double of the covered area and now preferably it should be on the south if it is maintained on the single side and we can have tree fodder in between the farm we can have the tree fodder which is consumed by the goats i am telling uh, to the participants for the knowledge of the house in cirg magdu mathura we have 90% of the tree fodder trees which are consumed by the goats from taking from neem to what not so during lean seasons like winter we will be trimming all the pruning all the tree fodders we will be using it as uh, green fodder for the goats the second important part is floor management so scientific recommendation is soil floor for goat pens initially people immediately ask sir i want to go to for slatted floors i want to why not for concrete floor and all but scientific recommendation considering the animal welfare ethics it is only soil floor or kacha floor is recommended for goat pens if soil floor daily cleaning is recommended then bedding is recommended for mainly mainly for newborn kids and uh, lactating animals during winter season to maintain the milk yield then what is the bedding management i have already told two important cost effective cost economic management practices to be followed in a flock having soil floor one is after cleaning every fortnight or during season where we are not in a position to dry the floor in that case every fortnight we should go for lime dusting that is powder lime not stone one which is called No, costly air the powder form of the lime powder we should use 100 gram for cubic meter that practical experience you can see in very well in the picture in this density we should dust it during dusting animal should be if suppose we are dusting in the covered area animal should be allowed in the open paddock and if you are doing in the open paddock we should be animal should be in the covered area otherwise the irritation and the respiratory distress will be there in the animals what is the benefit it will remove the excess moisture it will kill the disease causing microorganisms the second important cost effective management is soil replacement and soil loosening because if animals are there continuously in the floor if the soil get tightened it will become cake so to loosen that maybe once in a month or as per the requirement based on your stocking density you have to loosen the soil and leave it but after a year or so we should remove all the cakes maybe 1 inch 2 inch 3 inch depending upon the practical existence we should remove and replace it with the fresh soil during summer months where from outside where the soil is warm and um, the germ free and it is in powder form so that we can easily level in the floor brick floor is not recommended but maybe for young kids because brick floor and concrete floors if you ask me no totally it is not recommended for goats then areas where high humidity area uh, that wooden slatted floor or yes a wooden plank we can use it and uh, that is but we have studied it comparing because uh, private players are confusing or aggressively marketing i can say this word aggressively marketing saying this slatted floor is increasing the production of the goat so we have tested it and it is not so but animals are comfortable worm load is less and animals are neat and clean but not production is not increasing this is the on growth especially in but worm load we can red bare reduce mare bare minimum level if we are having raised floor or wooden uh, structure similarly manpower requirement 
so for larger scale bot i wish to suggest for larger scale farm after 2 to 3 years if we want they want to expand it they can go for uh, raised floor system because whatever initial in high investment we will be having that will be tallied with less manpower requirement on daily cleaning similarly on wooden floor for mill field same case as in case of growth then people always ask or they are curious sir regarding plastic slatted floor yes we can have it plastic slatted floor but initial cost will be two to three times as the top conventional soil floor so decide whether you want to go at the initial level or during the expansion level of three to two to three years these are some of the slatted floor and we have tested it again like wooden floor plastic slatted floor plastic floor also we have tested and at growth it's at par for all the breeds and as compared to soil floor so the recommendation is go for large commercial farm for reducing the manpower problem or manpower issues and as a bedding material i told it is issue even we can use it as a bedding see that plastic slatted floor material as a bedding material at 6 inch height kids are comfortable neat and clean dorm load is less particularly 3 to 6 months old kids and the score and all what we have studied and recommended it the third part is roof roof conventionally thatch roof is more comfortable scientifically but for large commercial goat farms we should go for alternate one like tiles cemented sheet roof what we say normally is asbestos sheet roof sheet roof that is not asbestos it because asbestos material is banned and it is causing cancerous growth bigger that is why in whatever we are seeing asbestos roofing material it is not having asbestos material it is only having cemented sheet roof then thermal insulated ga galvanized iron sheet roof like tata sheets are coming up and it is helping to reduce 0.5 to 1 degree temperature from the macro environment then fiber in enforced plastic sheet roof also we can use it that depends upon our availability our budget and so on then during winter one recommendation is that particularly for northern india it may not be applicable here the where the young kids the enclosure temp the microclimate should not be less than 10 degree if above 10 degree we will not be having any pneumonia respiratory problem in the kids and stunted growth if falling below 10 degree then we need to ensure that the microclimate inside the kids enclosure during winter months are not falling below 10 degree centigrade for this we may have to use the gunny bags we may have to use the thatch panel then bedding then solar exposure suppose in northern india first uh, last two weeks the last fortnight of the year and first fortnight of your new year the sunlight exposure will be minimum minimum bare minimum so in that case we should expose the kids newborn kids from 10 am to 4 pm to gain more heat for the body so that whatever we feed that is utilized for production purposes like growth so these are all the some pictorial uh, housing management practices we follow in northern india and we can simulate to the southern india i think not record but if we provide uh, microclimate more than 10 degree it will be beneficial for attaining higher growth some of the layout plans we have calculated and recommended for the farmers because uh, this is all case to case and the site to site it will be varying but we have recommended in a 100 plot for the information of the house i want to share suppose if we say 50 and along with the followers then total strength will be 100 100 if we say then along with the followers means followers means kids male female growing lactating all it will be approximately double so accordingly we should cal calculate the floor space recommend based on the recommendation and we should design as per our own uh, requirement following the scientific principles this is for 100 goats layout design and plan this is for 50 goats this is for 25 goats plus two adult unit this is for 10 goats along with the following for small scale farm for livelihoods purposes the fourth part is health management only only general perception is that goats and sheep small ruminants suffer less when 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 it is less only for small scale 
level up to maybe five goats and ten goats. There may not be issue. People are not following uh, annual vaccination, deworming, and all. And even then, they are earning their bread and butter with respect. But for commercial business, there are many issues. We need to follow the scientific principles. Yes, yes, we may have mortality even up to the tune of 100%. Two most important prominent disease in the goat farm is PPR, pest dyspeptic ruminants, and enterotoxemia. These two diseases create havoc. Even PPR creates even 100% mortality in the flock. Then most of the people start with enthusiasm and they are not in a position to follow the vaccination properly and they shut down blaming the goats not the entrepreneur or not themselves. So I want to stress upon here, follow the annual health calendar recommended minimum, minimum annual recommended. This is cost around 15 to 20 rupees per animal per year. So if we ready to spend 15 rupees to 20 rupees, including deworming, we will be saving the precious animal in our farm and we will be sure to get the benefit. So these four diseases and the, the vaccination should be started after weaning, that is after three months. Then we should give you a gap of minimum 10 to 15 days between each vaccine. And what is for PPR, it is only after giving one injection. If it is well maintained, cold chain is maintained, no need to give, uh, repeat the vaccination for three years in the flock. For endotoxemia, we, know we need to go after 15 days of first injection, then after three to four weeks as a booster dose, then six monthly. Similarly, FMD, then, so here there may be confusion. So after three months, what to do, sir? That's why I was telling 10 to 15 days interval, you continue. Then I'll maintain the record and repeat it wherever it is required. The goat pox, again, annual vaccination, then again for the farmer, that's why I'm telling initial period, gaining experience, developing network, knowing the availability, where it is available, where it is good quality one, who is responsible, organization and all for developing network and developing knowledge. We need to have minimum number of animals in the flock for first two to three years and learn how to vaccinate it because each time if you uh, call a veterinarian, the cost may be rearing maybe more. So the vaccination and all, you can learn as an entrepreneur or your staff can learn in minimum health interventions in the farm so that we can realize more profit. But whatever company is producing vaccine, follow the instructions and maintain the gap between vaccinations. Then deworming, coccidia is the problem mainly for three to six months old, weaning, weaning, stunted growth appears. So two to six months, any coccidia state, we can use it, then deworming before and after any season, general thumb rule is before and after vaccine or any season because worm load will be more. But for stall feeding, we can follow this deworming schedule and pre and post winter for lice infestation and monsoon season. That's fleas and all it jump like anything. So in that case, we should fire whole premises um, and maintain, uh, remove, burn the soil and all so that this uh, external persists may not be there, all, but even then outbreak will be there and we have to take up the practices. That for chronic diseases like brucellosis, Jonis disease, mycoplasmosis, annual screening, random screening should be there. If any positive animal, it should be culled immediately, not slaughtered, not sold. As a responsible businessman, if you want to see that this enterprise should grow, you should not sell to the, uh, what to say, uh, consumption purposes. General management, many general management practices are there, but for management practices which are giving economic return, I am focusing on is hoof, hoof trimming. This is all excess grown poor. The advantage is that people may ask, sir, no one is uh, trimming, but if it is excessively grown without proper care, animal may not keep maintain its right posture and gait, animal be, may not be in a position to bear its body weight. Particularly for breeding bugs, if uh, 80 to 90 kg breeding bugs like Jamunapari and Jakrana, if hoof trimming is not practiced in the flock, it may not do its primary work like mating or natural service, summon collection. It cannot bear its weight. And if not proper posture and gait, you cannot sell the buck for premium price. So we should take up, please, the take home message is only we should 
trim parallel to the hairline simply if you wet the hoof it will that that hairline will be visible i want to show somewhere this hairline will be visible the trimming should be parallel to the hairline and at what level we should trim till the slightest pinkish color appears because beyond that the capillaries are there bleeding will be there but sometimes animal gives jerk and the cuts no panic we can use tincture iodine or any antiseptic and leave it and the nature will take its own course the second part is castration for northern india or for muslim community the demand is there where demand is there we should take up this castration part there are three methods are there what for castration everybody knows but there are three methods bird is over which is the scientific method rubber band or elastic band method having cost involved repetitively recurring cost incisor or knife method again issues if experienced person is there they can take up this using simple blade also but otherwise bardizo is the best bardizo castrator costs around 1800 to 2500 rupees single one time investment stainless steel no issue then both the sides we should uh, what to say in crest the main principle is stopping the blood to the testicle so that the testicular tissue uh, what to say shrink itself in 6 to 8 weeks time varying from breed to breed and feeding level but after 2 months only skin will be remaining and the testicles will be vanished so in that case what will happen animal will be docile after 3 months no need to give having separate enclosure but which animal we should castrate only the surplus animal which are not required for breeding purposes that only we have to uh, castrate it and we should crush it at two points if anybody interested they can contact me i can explain in detail because i don't want to waste time in explaining the how to go for castration and all i i am having in the first slide itself my mail my mail id and mobile number they can contact me in detail in mail and mobile if mobile after 6 o'clock in elastic method i don't recommend it because cost involved and fourth important part for commercial farming is identification even i can say this is the first requirement in a commercial farm purpose we need to identify we need to name them otherwise it is not possible to give individual care or treatment or maintaining the record if a record is maintained the live animal weight the cost of live animal we can say it as double suppose 250 rupees per kg live animal for meat if you maintain the record and breeding record if you breeding record all the record to pedigree register we can even sell it to the premium price of double 500 rupees per live weight people are ready to purchase so two types of identification temporary permanent temporary using silver nitrate or even our uh, what to say hair dye if coat color is white if not possible then we should go for some smaller iron plate or plastic plate mentioning uh, kid number and dam number till uh, completion of the suckling milk feeding after that we can go for permanent identification using plastic tags or metal tags but in our cirg presently we are using on large scale we are using tattooing using conventional method of tattooing with less pain because tax and all if we uh, send for grazing the tax are entangled in the shrubs and the ear are tear giving um, bad uh, look to the elite animals so farmer me ask if brawler farm brawler kid farm should i go i think for only 3 months 4 months no need to go because you are going to sell it if it is a breeding farm or if you want to sell the young animals for rearing purposes as a breeder stock we should you should we should we must rather maintain the identification in the organism flock these are the practices we do in the farm and a larger scale in western countries even electronic identification is using chip with computer system we can take out of the this all it will take maybe a decade or so temporary identification needed then what about dark or brown colored tattooing is not possible then we have to go for tax if animals are maintained under stall feeding 
again no need of panicking anything either metal tax or aluminium tax or plastic tax but it cost around 10 rupees 20 rupees so if you go for metal tag uh, aluminium tax it will be costing around 3 to 4 rupees or 5 rupees per piece then fifth important part is weighing why we should take weight because people are in middlemen are always 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 misleading the uh, goat keepers poor goat keepers and uh, they cheat yes we all know only grower get the least benefit and middleman gets the most benefit in any production system for any commodity so general advice is you purchase the animal on weight basis and sell the animal on weight basis this will give confidence and more profit to the farm frequency immediately after birth we should wait the kid what is the birth weight then up to three months fortnightly every 15 days then till lifetime thereafter why because the additional operation but if we if we, if we take the weight we can monitor the animal's health because some diseases like Joni's disease suddenly 5 kg body weight loss will be there clinical symptoms may not be there but if we have that record and the supervisor or manager have that record he can before clinical symptoms come in the flock he can address that animal separate it give special care and treatment so that within a day within one hour six hours if any illness if we address it the cost of treatment will be less animals response will be more if we delay this process then the, uh, the response of the treatment will be more and it will not be economical rather cost will be shoot up so weighing we need to take up if larger scale even digital weighing machine uh, what to say customized digital weighing machine we can customize and animal if we open the gate it will automatically jump and within 30 seconds 10 seconds the body weight in the display will be displayed and we can note it down so in a nutshell i want to give you a uh, for a startup entrepreneurs follow the minimum requirement and construct cost effective or temporary shelter for learning during learning period cost of construction i told already permanent set if it is five to six lakhs low cost set we can restrict up to one to 1.5 lakhs so the, the saving of four lakhs we can use it for purchasing the foundation stock feed fodder bank establishment then this is control measure if you follow these steps you are going to be a successful goat entrepreneur in near future Yes, but I, I, I dream, but I dream, I wish this goat farming in a decade or so will be with the uh, participation of educated, unemployed rural youths, even, even, even we had, we had a trainee of a civil servant, a retired IAS officer many 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 cpwd professionals many professionals of particularly it sector people are coming up with their participation salute to their interest with their participation this goat farming is going to be a goat industry in new future following the automation following the specialized goat rearing with even two 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 tire three tire goat model shelters are coming up and i i, I am very optimistic and positive enough to dream this and I wish that this goat farming should be a goat industry following the path of poultry industry for the benefit of farming community and as a nation whole. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. I'm glad to receive questions. Thank you, thank you. If we have a few questions, because since we have gone over 12, uh, okay. If we have one or two questions, we can have. Uh, they can have. Yeah, they can have in mail also. I have given my mail in first slide. Yes, yes, yes. So mail and mobile number, I am always accessible. No problem. Are there any questions? Please ask. Sir, I don't think uh, there are any, any questions. Sir, good morning, sir. Any yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. I'm Dr. A.V. Jensi Sinigo, sir, uh, from Veterinary College and Research Institute, Tirunelveli. Sir, it is one oh. of the very good presentations, sir. Sir, my okay. doubt is identification. For oh. identification, uh, which one is uh, best, sir? Whether a uh, tagging method, otherwise, if you are using that uh, cheap, which one is uh, cheaper, sir? Doctor, doctor, if animals are going for grazing, the tagging issue will be the turning of ears and missing of the tags. 
So in that case, if possible, you can take up tattooing, which will be cost effective. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Hello. Yes, doctor. Please. Hello. Yes, sir. Please, I am hearing. Audible. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Very good presentation, sir. Uh, Thank you. One question. I just I want to know, sir. Yeah. What What type of welfare concentration we can uh, do? Uh, for the uh, goat rearing because uh, as we know uh, in india uh, we are uh, we do not have able to develop the standard uh, protocol for uh, welfare mm. maybe yeah. in housing or in feeding or something so yeah. can you suggest something a uh, little bit uh, about goat farming and what type of welfare, welfare consideration uh, we can uh, uh, apply to the goat farming for the betterment of the livestock for the betterment of the our health and yeah, uh, yeah. the whole presentation my focus was as a lpm man my focus was having maximum profit or optimum profit with minimum input cost without compromising the welfare suppose if we give adequate feed if we give adequate floor space and group dynamics following group dynamics that is 40 to 50 animals i think i think with full feeding i just told the practical tips also full feeding in the evening suppose if you take a look in the flock in the evening hours if animal stomachs are filled that that means you are maintaining your animal following the all the animal welfare ethics okay okay but practically what happens practically if we while starting the farm we are not in a position to follow it we are compromising the welfare and they end up in problems. But we have to fine tune the things, economics, welfare, production. If we fine tune and standardize at local level, that would be better. But welfare recommendations are there, doctor. What should be the floor space? What should be the feed requirement? Every requirement, uh, recommendation is a uh, guideline only. But whether we are in a position to implement that, that is the question. Sir, uh, one thing uh, already we have BIS standard, and yeah. uh, as for BIS standard, we are following that standard, and we are doing uh, farming goat farming. Yeah. But that standard, that standard is developed, I think, more than twenty years back. So yeah. in the in scenario, uh, when we see that climate or uh, changing the practices, also uh, the revised. Mm. Yeah, yeah, uh, doctor. Yeah. Doctor, actually, CSWRI and CARG or having a recommendation not we are not strictly following bas recommendation carg is having uh, recommended practices and based on what should be the climate resilient practices all there in website if you want i can share with you and you can follow it and improve upon as a professional we all have the responsibility to sensitize the entrepreneurs to come up Definitely, sir. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You, sir. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you are all active participation of the professionals, definitely I am optimistic, doctor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, especially uh, on behalf of the participants and on uh, on behalf of the organizing committee. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us. We're uh, extremely. Uh, uh, it is is an extreme pleasure to have you, sir, with us. Thank you. If you could share the PPT on the email with us, and we'll make it part of the. I already, sir, I already made it yesterday. I received the information uh, immediately after uh, closing this presentation. I will be sending to uh, that mail given to me. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much for giving me opportunity to interact with the uh, stakeholders of Good Husbandry. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, okay participants can leave and join back at 2.30.